Uh, but there is a move now to blame the Second Amendment. President Obama spoke about an hour ago. We took it live, uh, blaming the Second Amendment and basically calling for restrictions. We know they're heating back up for this, and they're saying gun ownership is the new KKK. We've heard it from Al Sharpton. We've heard it from Michael Moore, all the usual uh, suspects. Time and time and time again, using this to try to disarm the people. We know gun crime's down 50-plus percent since 1992. We showed those statistics earlier, even showed the L.A. Times earlier admitting it. But the perceptions being created that gun crime is up. This is just unconscionable that this is happening. And we see massive push towards racial division, massive push that that's our problem in America to destabilize local governments and basically federalize things. That is the push that is taking place. Now, separate from that, we have tens of millions of black people. We'll get the numbers from the expert, Dr. Reverend Childress, from blackgenocide.org that since Roe v. Wade, over 50% of black people in this country were never born. Now, I've gone out to abortion clinics and demonstrated and done reports 30, 40 times over the years. But I've never specifically went out there and made it just about black babies. We did that last month. It's all these horrible Red Brigade communists come out from under a rock, say, I, you know, I, we kill our babies, how great it is. Why isn't anybody concerned about innocent babies? This guy coldly sat there reportedly for an hour before he killed these people in a prayer meeting, including a state senator who was the preacher. And then left one person as a witness and one five-year-old lived because they played dead. Pretty smart. Well, it would have been smarter if that state senator would have been packing heat. And the answer is to start arming. The answer is to defend ourselves. The answer to bad people is good people with guns. Obama said no other country has violence like this in the Western world. That's not true. Look at the numbers in England, the numbers in areas of Europe. Upwards of three times the muggings and stabbings and, and, and violent crime and burglary numbers. Yes, we have the highest rate in the Western world for people being shot to death. That's because we're an armed society. And yes, there are problems with guns. But it's a human problem, not the problem of the gun. And you can't penalize good people because of what bad people do. We're going to go to Reverend Childers here in a moment. I wanted to get Shikari Jackson here for kind of a roundtable discussion. We're also going to go to uh, Jesse, Francis, Joe, Jerry, Vincent, and others and take your phone calls. Uh, but Shikari, before I go to Reverend Childress, and we'll put it, Reverend Childress' website up there with his URL, uh, before we do that, uh, just overall in there analyzing different angles of this, um, what's your overall first assumption, and are you surprised we've confirmed that he was on a, a psychotropic-style drug? Oh, not at all. When we talk about these drugs that I mean these people were on, uh, myself and Kid Daniels, we went to Fort Hood after this most recent shooting, and Kid asked the general, he said, was this guy on any type of drugs? And he answered him flat out and said yes. So we see this time and time again, these people who take these uh, mind-altering drugs that are supposed to help you, but to anybody who had watched these commercials, Alex, they see in the, in the fine print when the guy tries to speak real fast, this could, uh, you stop taking this drug immediately if you have any thoughts of suicide or violence towards others or something to that effect. So it, that does not surprise me at all. Now, as far as, as far as the actions of this individual, Mr. Roof, well, I shouldn't call him Mr. Roof, of uh, going to this church and killing these people. He looks know, whacked out of his brain. Yeah, I mean, you can take one look at this guy. They have mug shots of him. They have, I guess, Facebook pictures or wherever these pictures come from. And he definitely looks like he's on another planet. You know, he's, he has this blank stare, this weird haircut. The guy looks like something's wrong with him. And uh, to see this, it's very horrible. But to anybody who would say, let's immediately take away the guns, I was telling you off air, Alex, that I had an uncle, you know, he's passed away now. But back when we had a church up in Michigan, if he wasn't packing, he made sure that the person watching the door had the heat on him. You know, and, and it wasn't, you know, some obtruse thing. It wasn't, you know, very pushy. You know, he's just politely answering the door, opening the door, hey, come on in, and you just had a, you know, a Glock or whatever you had. Because somebody might come looking for somebody they want to shoot at the church, yeah. or it might be a crazy. Yeah, somebody who just wants to go in there and kick up stuff. But that's the reason why you have an armed society, so you can defend yourself. And this is no way of knocking the police, but just this most recent incident, dialing 911 did not save the people in this building. That's why you need to have the ability to defend yourself. And we think about the shootings that happened 
recently right here in Dallas, also this past Thanksgiving here in Austin. And yeah, the guy goes to a hard target, a police station. He's able to fire off rounds in both of these cases, but the police take him down. Why? Because the police are armed. They can respond. They don't have to dial 911. They are 911. That's why you need to be your own 911 and have the ability to defend yourself. That's right. Charles Black Charleston Church should have been its own 911. They should have been armed. Uh, 911 didn't save the victims at Charleston. There's your headline. I mean, we have we're in a culture war, folks. A war for individual liberty. What do you think? And I want to go to Reverend Childress and stay with us, Shikari, uh, of your analysis. What do you think of the instant attempt to claim that guns are now somehow racist? Well, you know, they always blame guns, whether it's, you know, the L.A. Times or when the uh, Elliot Roger case happened briefly or recently. And, you know, he had a knife, he used a car, but just the simple fact that he used a gun, we have to ban all the guns. It wasn't let's ban the cars, let's go ban the knives. And now when we're talking about the uh, simple act of owning a firearm as racist, it's nothing new, but it's very inaccurate. You know, because regardless of what they may be doing today, the NRA was founded to help minorities learn how to shoot. And a lot of people forget that. They say the NRA is the KKK, which cannot be further than the, from the truth. And, and they know that when they say that on Fox Sports and CNN. Let's not forget, Rupert Murdoch has these messages on his other platforms. Fox News, he has just to control conservatives. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, he's pushing carbon chain, you know, carbon taxes, gun control. It's sick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they, it's a, a cultural shame. They want you to think owning a gun makes you a white racist Southerner. You know, there I go out to these open carry rallies. Yeah, there's a lot of white people there, but you also have black people. You also have women. It's not just a white male. Do you feel thing. welcome there? Oh, yeah. And, you know, most of the people I know, whether it's Grisham or uh, Justin, the other open carry guys, a lot of them are white. And, you know, I've never felt out of place or, you know. In fact, you're friends than. with a lot of folks. We can yeah. go out and do stuff. Yeah. I, I don't look at what color you are. You don't either. But that's what these socialists do. The truth is, Jakari, we're liberals. In the Thomas Jefferson sense, we want freedom for everybody. We hang out with whoever we want. We're not looking at skin color. The controlled left, all they've got is race now. And they're invoking all these white races to come out of the woodwork. We know they've got bots spamming InfoWars with racist garbage from both sides to get us all fighting with each other. We've got to stop it. Uh, I want to get into race war with you after uh, Reverend Childress leaves us. I want to keep you with us. Someone, Larry Nichols, joins us. He's a big guest. He used to be basically Bill Clinton's right-hand man wow. when he was governor. Uh, exposed a lot of the murders, Clinton Chronicles. They've tried to kill him before. Everything he's written about with Hillary is now coming true. He's going to be joining us. Normally, okay. I'd cancel a guest with something big like this happening, but he understands how their politics work, so stay with us. Uh, Reverend Childress, thank you for holding. Thank you for coming on on short notice. Uh, last time we had you on, it was about the fact that you spontaneously had already started All Black Lives Matter. One of my crew had the idea to do it, too. We didn't even know that you were doing it when we called you to get you to comment on it uh, to try to point out that all black lives matter. Uh, of course, I'm making the parallel here. Yes, nine lives are terrible that have been lost. Uh, this is a terrible situation. Obviously, a mentally ill, uh, racist, crazy person who also has a horrible chili bowl haircut uh, who was on psychotropics, we're now learning. But what about the tens of millions of blacks that were cut up in the womb cold-bloodedly as well. The police and Obama keep talking about how cold-blooded it was to go sit down with people in a church, and it was super cold-blooded. But uh, isn't it more cold-blooded to kill babies and then go have lunch? Oh, there's no, no question about that. But we, your audience and myself, I, I'm not as uh, intuitive as I would like to be. There's something systemic about this. I, I really believe you do have an excellent observation is if that this is being enticed or this young man on a drug uh, was given instructions. It's amazing to me that he picked such a historical place, a, a site that would be endeared by African Americans in order to go in and cause this carnage. That's right. He uh, wasn't, oh, that's a great point. He wasn't just trying to kill black people. He wanted to stir folks up or whoever advised him. I mean, does yes. anybody believe this yes. chili bowl haircut guy that looks like He's got a 70 IQ. I mean, he looks, I don't mean to be mean, he looks mentally disabled. He looks like Dumb and Dumber. Does anybody believe he would be, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I appreciate it because it, it, it appears to me that he was uh, coerced, that this is where that jargon, for what I understand he was saying inside the church, is typical old Klan language to entice white men to join the Klan. 
but it's like almost like overkill. Like they were giving him what to say so it would be directed towards the Klan. I mean, it was kind of weird to me hearing some of the comments that he made before he allowed this one young lady uh, to live. But uh, why is, and once again, South Carolina. Now, you now, you know, out of all the police issues, the one involving Walter Scott was the most blatant. And now you have this incident. South Carolina really is going to have to call home the church, call on his faith. There must be peace. And of course, Al Sharpton and Jesse are already there. I don't know really how this is all going to turn out, but it is, as you say, someone unquestionably, systemically is trying to cause race indifference, race war. I'm just going to be plain and simple. And um, if I would have picked all the states to do it, I would have had to say when I thought about it, yes, yeah, South Carolina, because they should have been reeling from the Walter Scott situation. Now you have this young man picking a historical black church, one with a history, one with a state senator. And you're right, a state senator in these times and days needs to know he, he has to be armed. He has to be able to protect himself or have someone there. And you pick that particular historical black uh, institution, that site, which we understand, uh, I think my wife just told me that it's also been uh, defined by the state as historical to, to do this. So um, I think we may not ever get to the bottom of it, but I, I, I think it was coerced. I think it was planned. See, when I first came on, you know, I said, I don't want to jump to conclusions. And my gut tells me he might have actually done the shooting. But that doesn't mean that he wasn't wound up. And then I said, if he was given amnesics, mm. then we know it's a setup because McVeigh, Sirhan, Sirhan, and others, amnesics came up. And they didn't remember anything. And like I said, my dad's a retired oral surgeon and dentist. Uh, when people would come in for sedation dentistry, he'd, he'd give them Halcyon. And if you take Halcyon, you, I mean, I don't want to give out too many details, give folks ideas, but you can give somebody a large dose of that. And you can pretty much give them a gun and say, kill that person. Or you can say, stick your hand in this, you know, this, this garbage disposal. It's mind control. Uh, and that's just one drug in the whole class. Now we learn, and it's in the news, that he was on a drug that is in, beyond psychotropic, that is in the amnesic class. So that's exactly what I would expect to see. I mean, this is really looking bad. This is, and like you said, I'd forgotten that, but studying the Klan back in college, because, you know, they have you in U.S. history, do a whole semester basically on it, that the Klan, that's how they would recruit. They're getting our white women. Oh, my yes. God. This is yeah. textbook. This just yes. sounds like, yes. well, you know, the Southern Barbary yeah. Law Center was running the Elohim City white supremacist compound. I'm just saying. It, it sounds like something out of central casting. Uh, so you're saying in your gut this looks kind of like it's been messed with here, Reverend? Uh you will find out, or maybe you won't find out. It, it was too, it, it, it was, it, it's obviously textbook. I think they feel because of the tensions already that people won't look uh, and to see indeed that this is some type of subterfuge by those who sit in high places. Let's, let's, let's face it, they're the only ones that can pull this off. But um, that language certainly was a tip off. Uh, the fact that they would leave someone there, you know, is almost that that was the instructions for him to do. This is the way you do this. Now, if he's really smart, nobody walks out, okay? But if if he's been basically coerced or constrained to do this, uh, obviously he is a guinea pig or he's the scapegoat for something a lot bigger. Sure, well, the mainstream uh, media is going to demonize us for bringing this up and even questioning, but... If there's a long history of staged and provocateur events, we'd be crazy not to. But look at the perfect timing with the White House, the Justice Department caught running a false flag, Fast and Furious, with the yes. guns. It came out CBS News. They were going to blame the Second Amendment. I mean, that was the plan. They've got a history. It's, it's all they've got with black unemployment doubling, the abortions, black folks waking up. Uh, is there really pushing a race war? It, it, it's now, I'm really going out there, but these things are coming to me very strongly. This is done just before the Juneteenth, or Juneteenth celebrations this weekend. Oh, yeah. You will have oh. across the nation African-Americans gathering together for Black Pride, 
Uh, a lot of it is basically uh, some of it to blame the established order for our issues and problems. But um, they're going to be gathering. I'm going to skip this break. It's too